Hi there. In this video, let's take a look how we can use UI Toolkit with visual scripting. Now, I don't expect everyone have used UI Toolkit, so let's take a quick look at it. And basically, it's another way of creating UI for your game. So if we go into hierarchy or right click, I have UI Toolkit right here and I can create a UI document. So instead of creating canvas or creating elements specifically, we can create this UI document that's going to contain all of our UI elements. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, I am using Unity 2022.3 version. So if you're using an older one, you might need to install the package before you see the UI toolkit option. Once we add this UI document, we need to provide a source asset, which we can create by going to Window, UI Toolkit, and open the UI Builder. So this is where we can see the UI that we're building. And currently, we're just looking at a transparent background. So in Hierarchy, if we select this unsaved file that we're about to create. I will, we have some options in the inspector so we can match in game view and that's going to expand to the size that our current game is created at. And right here we have an option for canvas background and we can select the camera from our scene so that we can preview how the UI is going to look. To add anything to our UI, we have a list of options right here, containers, controllers, and a numerical fields. I'm not going to be covering all of these, so I'm just going to use a label which we can display text. And for each element, we have options that we can use to change the text and color and all of that. But for us to be able to access this from visual scripting, we need to make sure to create a name for it. So let's call this test label. And that's going to be the unique name for this element that we can search for and find in our code. You can also add buttons and change the layout of them as you like. But let's go and see how we can interact with them in visual scripting. So first, let's save this file. I'll just call it UI. And now we can close this window. Here is that file that was just created in our assets. So we can drag and drop it into the source asset. And as soon as we do that, we can see the new UI that we created appeared over our game. So now let's try to manipulate the UI with visual scripting. Let's go and add a script machine. And I'll use an embedded added graph. And in here, we can search for UI document and expose the UI document here. And these are all of the fields that we can access from here. To get access to the label, we need to go to root visual element and try to find it there. But as you can see, we don't have any visual element nodes here. So to fix that, we'll have to add them. Now, if you're wondering how do you know which items to add, we can go and expand the documentations here. We can see that a root visual element is of a type visual element. So let's go to our project settings. And under visual scripting, we want to go to types options and add that type now. So let's look for a visual element, click on that to add. And then we also want to add the query extension, which is going to allow us to query those elements from our UI document. And now I know that I'm going to try to access label and button elements in my visual scripting. So we'll have to add those as well look for a label and we want uh, one in the UI elements. And also let's add a button also from the UI elements. So those are the four things that I'm going to add. But if you're using any other types, just make sure you find them and add them so that you can have those visual scripting nodes, which will give you access to some of the options of that UI element. Now we need to click Regenerate Nodes. And once that is complete, we can go back to our visual scripting. 
And from this root visual element, we want to create a query. But instead of using this expose method, let's actually get that unit. So we want UI document, get root visual element. Now from this root visual element, you can see that we have options for visual elements now. You can go inside here and look at all of the options that are here. So if you expose, you can see all the settings that you can access and change here. But what I'm looking for is the query option so we can find that label that we created. There's a query written out which returns a query builder, but we're actually interested in getting the first element that matches this case. So let's use this Q name class name. For the name, we're going to use the name that we've created for the label in our UI document. Um, so let's write test label and we'll execute this on start. So on start, we're going to query for test label and we'll expect to get label element from here. We can expose and see what we have for the label. And there we can see that there is the text and that is what we're interested in changing. So let's look for a label again. And now let's set text. For text, let's write hi from VS. So we'll execute this on start. And let's test it out and make sure that is functions like we expected. And there we go, uh, the text has successfully changed. So that is working. Now let's see what we can do with the button. So I'm gonna copy this code over. And here, let's switch the query to button. And we want to replace this element from label set text to button set text. So I'll switch that. And if we run it, we should see the text of that button switched as well. So there you go, both label and button have changed their text. But for a button, we're actually interested in listening for click events. So let's see if that is available. We're looking for button elements. And in here, the only thing that we have that is related to click is to get clickable or to set clickable, which is a flag, but we don't have a node to listen for those events. And that is the current limitation of visual scripting with the UI elements. To listen for events from UI elements, we need to register for that event. And currently that is not available in visual scripting. But you can quickly create a C-sharp script that can register an event. And instead of executing the code on the C-sharp script, you can pass it to visual scripting. And that is the script that I've showed in my previous videos on passing events from advertisement libraries and also from multiplayer libraries. Currently, I'm experimenting on how I can make it easier for visual scripting and I'll add the solution to my Spock package. So I'm hoping that will be available in the next update. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click on the like button. And if you have any more questions, write that in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.